Well, I just want to say good afternoon to everybody. This is Nancy Howell, the compiler for the Fall Warbler Challenge, and we had a couple of participants, including myself. And this is a is going to be a really, I think, nice wrap up, showing what was around and what people saw, and just had a really good time. And maybe it'll get us psyched up. How about that spring warbler challenge? How about that? Yeah. So uh, fall is a difficult time to look at, at warblers because they may not be quite as, as brilliant as they are in the, in the spring. But again, I think everybody who participated had a great time. And I thank those who did participate and send in their lists. So we're going to get started. And... Uh, we have a really cool slide presentation that Betsy uh, O'Hagan helped to create. So here's our Fall Warbler Challenge Series 2020 wrap up. So the challenge itself occurred from September 1st through October 31st. Uh, this was at a main time when warblers were heading through the area, coming from the north, heading south. Uh, oh, there were lots of other songbirds as well, so I hope people had a good time seeing some other things. Uh, of course, today is our wrap-up. And uh, then, like I say, we're going to get set for the spring. And notice those dates, April 1st through May 31st uh, of 2021 for our Spring Warbler Challenge. And that's, again, as a major time when warblers are coming through the area for um, uh, heading northward this time. So this is a lot of fun. All right, and of course, fall is always a nice time to be out. Uh, some folks traveled throughout different places in Cuyahoga County. Uh, some folks stuck around closer to home. Um, one of the areas that some visitors went to is Lake Isaac, and Tom Fishburn provided uh, many, many of our photographs for this presentation. <laughs> All right, so we did have some rules for the Fall Warbler Challenge, and the same rules uh, or similar rules are going to be in place for the spring. Uh, but of course, again, the dates of the challenge for fall were September 1st through October 31st. And uh, if you happen to go out with uh, other folks, uh, we would, due to COVID, we tried to limit the group to three people or fewer. Um, a lot of people went on their own or maybe with a, a, another person. Um, and of course, all the COVID gathering guidelines, wearing masks, remaining at least six feet apart, and, and so forth, uh, should you have gone out with a group. Now, what's spring going to hold for COVID? Hmm. Boy, that's really hard to tell. Uh, but I would guess that we'll probably have to follow those similar guidelines uh, for the spring. Here's the, an important one, that fourth bullet point. It was to, re, you were to remain in the county in which you live. So if I lived in Medina County, I could travel anywhere through Medina County looking for fall warblers. I happen to live in Cuyahoga County. So I traveled to a few places in Cuyahoga County. Um, and uh, that will also be one of the rules for the spring. Uh, we did have tr uh, a checklist tracking sheet, and that will be provided in the spring as well, too. A uh, number of folks filled out that tracking sheet for our fall warbler challenge. And that's what this, the, the uh, sheet looked like. Uh, across the top were places for... I'm trying to get my pointer to work. Haha. -ha. So we have our cool looking logo. We had places for the date and the area in which you visited. So there were several of them. And then the column listed the warblers in alphabetical order, starting with American Red Start and ending with 
uh, the yellow warbler uh, on the sheet. So all you had to do was fill in the date and where you vi uh, visited that day and then simply put X marks as to what species of warblers were seen. Nobody had to keep track of the numbers of warblers, just simply keeping track of the, uh, the species that were sighted. This is not a warbler, but it's a really beautiful bird that was visiting Lake Isaac uh, in, in, the, um, uh, in the fall. All right, so we're going to go through the different checklists that people sent in. Um, my checklist, I actually had two sheets because I like to go out. So uh, I'm going to get my little pointer here. You might notice uh, I tended to visit Lake Isaac, which is nearby. Plus, during the month of September, Lake Isaac was uh, one of the, what well, actually was the virtual, I believe it was Lake Isaac was, no, uh, October I think was the, the virtual field trip. But uh, I visited Lake Isaac a number of times. But I also like the Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve, and you'll see that listed as CLNP in a number of places as well. So one page I have, um, again, American Red Start. I saw in a few days and then Bay Breasted Warbler. So you see how it's filled out. Uh, check out Common Yellowthroat here. Look at this. Boop, 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 boop. Every time I went out, no matter where I was, I seemed to run into the Common Yellowthroat. Um, I did have, uh, so my list was so long and it's so big on this on these screens that it's divided into two sections. So this was the upper section of page one. This is the lower section of page one. And you can see, you know, there were quite a few warblers that I, I was able to, uh, to get a hold of. Page two, again, the upper part of the checklist. And you notice the dates. This is the end of September into October. And I there should have been one more date on here because I went out to through October 31st. All right. And here's the lower part of that checklist. And I hope you'll notice um, that yellow rumped warbler, boop, 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 sighted. So they were kind of a latecomer. They they arrive a little bit later in the um, uh, in the migration section. Um, so there they are almost all the times I was out. That is not a warbler. It's a beautiful scene though. Trina, Trina, are you on right now? I don't know if you want to talk about your checklist. Hello. Um, I um, have a few sightings, and um, mostly I was thrilled with the black-throated blue because I had just the absolute best view of that from my backyard. Uh, it was just, it was stunning. And then I, I think I saw quite a few other warblers, but I, I just could not. 100% identify them. Um, I had good luck up at Huntington uh, near the Bay Boat Club one morning, and it was wonderful, although I couldn't identify several of them, but I sure enjoyed it. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, I see on your checklist you had black and white warbler and black-throated blue. That was nice. Those are, e those are fairly easy to identify. Here's your lower section of the checklist. And you, too, had a number of myrtle or yellow rump warblers uh, coming in in, the, again, the latter part of, of September and into October. And the Nashville warbler, too. So let's just look at that mm -hmm. upper section of your checklist and lower section of your checklist. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank very, you. Very yeah, thank you. A nice fall wildflower. 
Oh, Gloria. I don't know if Gloria is on our call. Oh, Gloria, are you there? I know Gloria spent some time in her yard, and she was only able to do a little bit, which is fine. I'm so glad. Uh, her upper part of her checklist, aha, check her, her lower part of the checklist. She had a Nashville warbler and a yellow rump or myrtle warbler. So all three of us had Nashville and yellow rump warblers while we were out, which is, which is really kind of nice. This is one of my favorite areas to visit. It's uh, Wallace Lake, part of Baldwin and Wallace Lake area in Berea. This looks like early, kind of like early in the fall. Colors are just beginning to come. All right, so some of the results for our fall warbler challenge where there were 21 species cited during the challenge. That's including all of the checklists. Um, Myself, Bertie, again, primarily Lake Isaac, Lake Abrams, as well as the Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve, Drina, hitting Huntington Reservation and her yard, and Gloria also birding in her yard. Uh, I had some of the best days, which were September 16th and 27th, and October 5th and 14th. Um, on uh, those days, each uh, had 14 species of warblers, and September 19 and 24, 13 species were cited. So again, there were again middle to September into early October seems to be really good times for warblers to come through. So you now kind of put that in your in your database uh, in your brain, and maybe next year uh, when we do this again. Um, Think about, hey, I think I'll go out in the middle of September. I'll think I'll go out in the end of uh, September because that seems to be when most of the warblers are coming through. Of course, weather plays a big role. Uh, that So it, it, you just never know. Uh, most often cited species were common yellowthroat and yellow rump warbler. And as I mentioned earlier, all of us per, all of participants had yellow rumped and Nashville warblers on our list. So again, with 21 species being cited, here is the list that, that um, were, were seen. And again, they're in alphabetical order. And we're going to take a look at what these birds look like in the fall. Some look very different from their spring plumage. Some change a little. And some don't change really much at all. And some of them can be really, really tough. All right, so the American Red Start uh, on the uh, left is, uh, again, you could see a male American Red Start looking just like an, a male American Red Start in the spring, black and orange. So they can really change a whole lot. The one on the right, the photo on the right, either shows an immature or a female, or, or it could be a young male too, like a, a bird that just hatched this year. And uh, again, they look similar. They have the, the little spots of yellow on the wing, on the side of the breast, on the tail. Um, they tend to fan their tails out a bit. So even if you were seeing a silhouette of the bird, and you know the back lighting was, was pretty bright. You could say, man, that bird is really flitting around. And look at it, it's fanning its tail. And, oh, I'll bet that's an American red star. So you can tell some of the, these birds by their behaviors as well. Here's one that changes a lot. The bay-breasted warbler um, in the spring is brown and bay and greenish and has the two white wing bars. And look at it in the fall. Hmm. Kind of, kind of greenish yellow. Uh, I do want to, you to notice the that some birds do not show that bay on the on the kind of the, the flanky area here. 
I know they're called a bay-breasted warbler, but that bay also extends to this flank. But on some birds, you can see it. Uh, bay-breasted warblers also have gray feet, grayish legs and gray feet, whereas a closely related species, the black pole warbler, has yellow feet. And look at those two bright white wing bars that uh, that really uh, stand out. Look at that. Boom, boom, boom. Here's one that doesn't change a whole lot. And this bird is really aptly named black and white warbler because it's black and white. But again, here's a bird that you can tell by the way it, it behaves uh, as to uh, for identification. The bird on the left, notice it's clinging to a, a, a tree trunk similar to maybe like a nuthatch would. Or sometimes they climb upwards like a creeper or a woodpecker. So black and white warblers will often cling to a trunk or a limb and even go upside down. Not always. So um, again, if you saw one at a distance and you're not quite sure, but you say, man, it's really doing a lot of clinging onto the side of a tree trunk or a limb, you can almost be assured that it is a black and white warbler. They do that a lot in the spring as well, too. So here's some beautiful black and white warbler photographs. Just stunning. Oh, black burning warbler. I'll tell you, if I had a shot of one in the spring, your eyes would be popping out. I have a friend who calls them Cheeto heads. You know how you get that orange stuff on your fingers when you're eating Cheetos? Oh, wait, you guys don't eat that kind of junk, do you? Well, that orange powder that, you know, is on Cheetos, well, that's about as orange as a black burning warbler male has in the spring. And you can see uh, neither of these birds has white that much orange on it, but you might notice that there's yellow uh, around the, the head and face. And I really want you to notice this triangle right here on the face. Boom, 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 right behind the eye. That's pretty diagnostic of a Blackburnian. Has two wing bars. And they often have a stripe of light color running down their back, one on one side and one on the other side, almost looking a little bit like um, suspenders that somebody might have, some light colored suspenders. So Blackburnian warblers, really, again, not too different in the fall, but certainly not quite as bright as they would be in the spring. This one is actually a fairly bright bird, the one on the right, with the with the, all the yellow on it. I think they're really fun to find in the fall. Remember I mentioned the uh, bay-breasted warbler being um, kind of hard to identify because it changes a lot? Well, here's another one that changes a lot, the black pole. Again, kind of a close relative of the bay-breasted. Uh, black pole warblers, I don't know if you recall, I mentioned that they have yellow feet. Boom, here. Now this one has a lot of sunlight shining on it, so it looks pinkish. But their feet are actually kind of yellow, sometimes even going up the leg. And they tend to have more streaking than the bay-breasted, uh, because black poles uh, are very, very streaky black and white in the uh, in the spring. By the way, the word black pole means black head or cap. So in the spring, this would be a solid, solid, solid black cap, very different from the black and white warbler. Um, and this bird, of course, has two wing bars as well. So you've got wing bars, you've got a lot more streaking, the yellow feet. So those are really diagnostic characteristics of the fall black and uh, I'm sorry black pole warbler.
Well, and again, not all birds change. Uh, the black-throated blue warbler, both male and female, look very much like the spring. And I'll bet on these for two photos you can tell which is the male. Yep, it's the one on the right. So black-throated blue, really aptly named. It's got black throat and it's that kind of a cerulean bluish color. So, again, you notice that this photo uh, that we have taken from the Macaulay Library, which is uh, at, at Cornell, was taken on October 1st. And notice that bird really does not look very different from a spring bird. But I do want you to notice that big patch of white on the wing, okay? Because the female, which is in the left, photograph, and I love this photo by Chuck Slusarczyk, because this bird is like hopping in the, and it didn't, didn't happen to have its wings out, so it's not just floating in the air, but it was hopping from one place to the next. But anyhow, the female looks, well, I don't even know what kind of color you can say, kind of a greenish gray above, a little yellowish below, but look at on her wing, look, look at that patch, that little white patch right there. Sometimes people say that the females are carrying this little white hanky in, in, uh, on their wing. So that's a, that's a real diagnostic one. Uh, some markings around the face as well, a little bit of uh, white around the eyebrow, a little bit of uh, kind of a, a crescent under the eye. Very nice. Black throated green warbler, sorry, only one photo here, but easy to identify. They don't change very much. I hope you do notice that the face is really bright yellow, not quite like the Blackburnian, which was a yellow, but not quite that bright. Uh, also, please notice that how dull uh, the, the black is covered with a little bit of white tipped feathers. Sometimes it's a little uh, darker than this, sometimes it's a little lighter, but this one is a fairly easy bird to identify in the fall. Not that much difference. Again, much, much more yellow in the face than that, uh, than the Blackburnian has. Cape May warblers. As you notice these two birds, we have a bright bird on the left-hand side and a much, much, much dull, more dull bird on the right-hand side. Um, you, hopefully you'll notice the scientific names, Cetophaga tigrina and tigrina little tiger. Can you see the little tiger stripes on these birds? Sure you can. Look at the breast on both of them. All right, you got the stripes on the bright colored bird, but in the fall, Cape Mays also have stripes on their breast, um, whether it's bright or dull, even dull birds can have stripes, or do have stripes. And I also want to point out this little yellow patch right behind kind of the ear area. Here's the eyeball. The ear would be right about here. So right back here, a little patch of yellow. Here on the brighter bird, that patch of yellow is, is uh, much, much, much brighter. So again, a lot of streaks, could be a bright bird, could be a much duller gray bird, but look at all those stripes and streaks on the breast, that little tiger. Oops, misidentified bird on the on the left, it is a chestnut-sided warbler, not a Cape May warbler. Um, but, but both of these are chestnut-sided warblers. And I just want you to notice how different they can look in the fall. Um, they have this unusual, let's take a look at the bird on the right, this unusual kind of a limey green color on the back. A little more light underneath and white around the eye, a nice white eye ring. The bird on the left happens to have a little bit of that chestnut on its side, and sometimes the birds do. So it can be a much duller bird, which I really don't consider the one on the right very dull at all. 
that, that's a pretty easy bird to identify with that limey green back and pale underside. If it does happen to have a little bit of rust on those flanks, then that's a clincher. Saw several of those this year. A lot of fun. Common yellow throats, you know, they're still being seen right now. Remember, this was one of the birds that was sighted pretty much throughout the whole fall migration. And um, one was just sighted not too long ago in the Cuyahoga Valley well, on Monday. Um, they, we have had them on the Christmas bird count, believe it or not, at the end of December here in Cuyahoga County. Um, they do like marshy or wetland areas. Um, and their name, again, is quite quite easy to, to identify them, a uh, common yellow throat. They are, have a yellow throat. Uh, the bird on the right is a nice bright male with that little black bandit mask on. The bird on the left also appears to be a male. I can see a little bit of black coming in, probably a bird that was hatched this year little bit of black feathers coming in there. Um, females will be a little harder to discern. So imagine erasing all those black feather or those black feathers from around his face and just having a pale throat and a kind of an olive green back. That one's a tough one for uh, several people for, for people to identify as far as, as the, the female common yellow throat. Magnolia warblers, well, they're kind of a washed out hint of what they look like in the spring. Uh, again, notice the yellow undersides, striping on the yellow undersides, and uh, the top kind of graying out as opposed to having the blacks and grays and the greens on their back. This was a fairly common bird throughout uh, the, the fall. Uh, magnolias are also noted for having their tip of their tail. Now you can't really see it on either of these two photographs, but the underside of their tail, uh, half is black, so the tip uh, is black and the part closer to the body is white. So it always reminds me of somebody maybe taking the bird and dipping its tail in black paint or black ink. So that's a real easy one to identify from underneath, is if you see that half black and half white tail. Nashville warblers, again, fairly easy to identify. They do, again, fade out for the fall. Uh, in the spring, they'd have a gray head, green back, and yellow undersides. And you could kind of see it here, especially on the bird on the right. The bird on the left is one that's a, a bit duller. Uh, but look at that nice bright uh, eye ring of white. Birds that are hatched in the spring, say the spring of this year, will have more of a, a, a dingy colored eye ring. But yellow underneath, kind of grayish green above. And fairly small birds, too. I know exactly the day that, that Tom Pishburn took this photograph of northern Perula because I saw this bird, or actually there were two of them, and whether this is the same bird or two different ones, I don't know. But uh, eBird uh, wanted me to verify. I had to write a little note saying, yep, uh, so early October is not a normal time to have northern Perula, but that's when this one was taken. And this is a nice bright bird. Um, by the way, northern Perulas are the smallest of our wood warblers, and they tend to be high in trees. Um, they, again, dull out during the fall, so the, the light, uh, I mean, sorry, the yellowish undersides, as you can see, still yellow but not the markings on the breast that would normally be there. With, a male would have 
some chestnut and some kind of that bluish uh, gray along the chest. Females much, much duller. But I love the photo on the right because there's a diagnostic characteristic of a northern perula, that patch of, of olive green right there on the, the back. Look at that. And often when the birds are feeding, they're flipping around uh, upside down, so that's a good one to see. Northern perula. That's a, that, this was a good sighting. I like that one because it was down low. It was about eye level. Oh, here's one that is definitely a confusing fall warbler and not very commonly seen. Uh, orange crowned warblers are primarily a western warbler and as they're moving from say the western part of Canada and, and Alaska there are some that head to the east um, but take a look at these two birds and look how different they are. Um, one of them has much more gray on it on its upper side. Underside is kind of yellowish dull um, but they do have yellow undertail coverts. And if you're not sure what an undertail covert is, it would be their, mm, some people say it's their bird butt. So on the right hand side, right under the wingtips here, these are what's called the undertail coverts. And on orange crowned warblers, they are yellow. If this were a Tennessee warbler, they're, they're, they're white. So this one you can't really tell but they're, they're both uh, orange crowned warblers. And look how much more yellow this bird is on the right hand side. The eye arcs, the, the uh, white color around the eye, nice bright bird here on the left, and a much, much more dull bird on the right. They often feed um, on insects that are on things like the goldenrod or some of the weedy plants that you'll see in fields. So they're not necessarily up in trees, but the bird on the, the left shows a really typical uh, place. So lots of dry, weedy stuff in a field, and the birds flitting about eating insects that are on those. Um, birds are being sighted still in the Cleveland area around um, Oh gosh, just lost my brain here. Uh, down in the flats, um, around, uh, not Merwin's Wharf, I'm trying to think of the name, but down by on, the, on the flats uh, area. So they are being still being seen, which is a little late. I mean, it's mid-November already. Oh, and they're called orange crowned warblers because they do have a patch of orange on their head. But you have to kind of ruffle the feathers to be able to see it. They just don't show it very often at all. You know what? Here's a bird that doesn't really change much at all. The oven bird. And sometimes people mistake this for a thrush, but it is a warbler. Uh, tends to walk around on the ground. And... Um, has that little uh, patch of orange. Now this one does have a patch of orange, but it's always showing. Um, but oven birds are a, a warbler that will uh, be seen again on the ground, uh, feeding on insects and invertebrates. They'll move over, move leaves and stuff like that. So, but they don't change much at all. So this one's a fairly easy one to be able to identify. Just don't call it a thrush, please. It doesn't like that. The palm warbler, here's one that changes quite a bit. Um, it, one diagnostic characteristic uh, in the fall, again, take a look, has yellow on the undertail coverts. Normally the bird is a little more brightly colored in the spring on its upper side. Um, they'll have a rusty cap. They'll have more yellow on their bodies. 
but in the fall they really, really do fade out and uh, can sometimes be a little tough to ID. Uh, but here's, a, here's something to remember. Palm warblers wag their tails. Not like a dog wagging back and forth or a cat swoosh, swooshing it, but they'll have their tails going up and down almost continuously. They'll often walk on the ground. Um, if they're up in a tree, they'll wag their tail too. So again, watching for that tail wag, you'll say, oh, that bird keeps moving its tail. Oh, that's a palm warbler, but of course. So again, watching for behaviors is something really, really important. Pine warblers are a tough one. They can be really bright in the spring, but look at how they really dull out in the fall. Um, the pine warblers are not always found in pine trees. This one on the right is appropriate because it is in a pine tree. Um, but the eye arcs, those white eye arcs around each around the eye, wing bars. Uh, tending to be a, a, a dull yellowish color. Um, so if you're stuck on something, you know, check out that the, the Cornell site. Check out a couple of good field guides or uh, bird ID uh, online guides. And uh, again, always look at pine warbler. They tend to be a later migrant. So. If you see something that's kind of dull in early September, it may not be a pine warbler. You may want to look somewhere uh, at something else. But uh, pines tend to be, again, later into in September into October. And believe it or not, sometimes they do hang around in the, in the winter. Uh, a couple folks have had photographs of them at their feeders, coming to suet feeders uh, in the wintertime. Tennessee warblers, uh, again, kind of a greenish above, light below. Uh, in the spring, they would have a nice gray cap on their head, and that, look at the look at the black line going through the eye, um, and notice the has white under the tail. Okay, that's really important to notice because you don't want to confuse this one again and the um, orange crown warbler. These birds, I think, tend to, when they're feeding, tend to probe. So, you know, they'll hop and they'll poke their beak and they'll hop and they'll poke their beak as if they're going into a flower or going into a, a little opening with their, with their beak. So they, they tend to be more of a prober than, hey, I'm, I'm going to snatch that, that uh, caterpillar from the leaf. pretty easily identified. Sometimes they'll have a little bit more noticeable wing markings here. These are simply new feathers uh, that have come in and they are tipped with a little bit of light color. Uh, they, this could be a bird that was hatched this year. And again, those are newer feathers that those that'll wear off. Uh, or it could be, again, as a molt, get, again, getting new feathers in and um, uh, having that little tip of light on the feathers. Wilson's warbler, not that much of a change. Um, both of these fall birds, you can see a little bit of a black cap. Now the cap may not be quite as bright as would be in the in the spring. You can see, especially the bird on the left, there's a little bit of, of uh, color on that black uh, on the cap, whereas the bird on the right is lacking a lot of the coloration, could be female. Um, but really, uh, a yellow bird with a nice black cap, pretty easy to ID. Here's a bird that we can see even now, although their numbers are dwindling. And here's a bird that loves poison ivy berries. And will also eat um, uh, some other fruits and berries. Is not always an insect eater. 
Uh, this is the yellow rumped or myrtle warbler. Uh, and you can see yellow rumped on the right hand side, its namesake, Boop. There are other warblers with yellow rumps. But also notice that this bird has a little wash of yellow right where the wing bends right here. And surprisingly, the scientific name, Cetophica coronata, cor think about corona, crown, they actually do have a little bit of yellow on their crown. Can you see it on either of these birds? No, it's really hard to see. Um, but these birds really are dull in the fall. Uh, the spring males are gray, black, yellow, and white, are just vibrant. And you can see both of these are much, much, much more brown and gray. The yellow on the rump, pretty diagnostic. And these birds make a, a chip sound a lot. So uh, that's what alerts me to the birds being around, is they're continually making a chip call. Uh, and then I, I you know, try to hone in on that. But watch for vines with fruits on them, especially poison ivy uh, vines because uh, these birds will feed a lot on poison ivy. So poison ivy is good in some respects. And the yellow warbler. Now the yellow warblers, again, look for basically it's a yellow bird. doesn't have a black cap like the Wilson's warbler. Uh, it, they may show a little bit of streaking on the breast, especially the males may have a little bit of streaking, but a lot of the birds that were hatched this year will be yellow and more yellow. So yellow tail, yellow wings, yellow head, yellow undersides, nice black beady eye, yellow warbler. They tend to be an early migrant. Uh, so I was a little surprised when I ran into some at Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve. Um, eBird didn't question it. Uh, I was a little surprised. Uh, so these birds can be found, again, a little bit later than, than um, uh, eight, uh, August when they do like to take off in the early September. But periodically you get a couple birds that are just hanger-ons and are a little late comers. So, I want to thank you for participating in the Fall Warbler Challenge, and we hope that you'll sign up for the Spring Warbler Challenge, uh, and have a, a great time checking out those warblers once the weather gets really nice and the birds are beautiful. But I've had a great time, I know, uh, with the Fall Warblers. I hope others did as well. I don't know if anybody has any questions or uh, would like to ask something. This is Drina, and I would just like to ask about the yellow rump. And um, is the yellow in the fall paler than in the spring? It may seem that way, but on the rump, no. The little okay. little side parts, you know, near where that bend of the wing is, um, may seem a little duller because, you know, a lot of these birds, they have um, a little extra color at the tip of their feathers, which wears off mm -hmm. as as the winter goes by. So mm -hmm. and then and then the true color underneath, the, the yellow or the black or the whatever. Will, will then appear much brighter. So so that, that could be one of the things that, that does happen with uh, some of the birds. Like um, with the Wilson's Warbler, you notice the, the one uh, had the cap with a little bit of edging on some of those feathers. Well, that just wears away, wears away, wears away throughout the winter and in the spring. He's looking handsome. The uh, pictures here are, are really wonderful pictures. They were great. A lot of them are from Tom Fishburn, Chuck Susarchik Jr. Uh, I believe his fewer were, were from the uh, Macaulay Library, and I there may have been one other person's photos that may have been being used. So, but we're we're so blessed to be able to utilize uh, 
so many of the photographers that we have with Western Cartographer, so many of their photos, um, just because they, you know, they've offered them up and they said, "Hey, mm -hmm. use them." Great. Alrighty. Well, I had a great time, and uh, we will let. I'm going to thank Betsy. Betsy, thank you so much for allowing me to to do my screen stuff. I don't know if I did really well, but I tried. You got an A plus plus, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.